Peace. Hello. <laughs> Sup? We're four men forgetting about football to watch Godmothered. <laughs> <That's gonna be. laughs> that doesn't define LP. Nothing does. <laughs> the latest Disney Plus um, original movie. But before we get too started, um, I'm going to – Doobie's just wearing a gray shirt. Kyle is uh, focused on the Toronto Raptors or Blue Jays. What's that about? Just It's a nice three-quarter sleeve shirt. My friend lives in Toronto. Is it Bill? It's uh, Bill does not live in Toronto. He lives in Ontario, though. Uh, oh. No, this is an old roommate of mine. Okay. And Alex, what are you wearing? I'm wearing a That's a Raven shirt. <laughs> yeah. The Muffin Man. <laughs> So this is all just set up to reveal our our resident themed wardrobe goddess. She's not ready. She's no. not ready. You'll no. have to wait a little more for for the pixie dust. I think she's ready because she can hear us. Uh, well, I don't care. Have fun. What, what the audience? Oh, That's so the there's no pixie dust. Oh, guys, I'm so sorry. <laughs> our resident godmother, uh, young, the youngest godmother I've ever seen. <laughs> the prettiest, even younger than what's her face in the movie. Then, yeah, yeah, I, I think so. How old is that woman? Like forty? I don't Bell? think so. No. I don't. I think she's ageless. <laughs> no, Betty White's ageless. <laughs> so, Alex, you did the junket and all that stuff. Why don't you start us off? Um. Well, I mean, Godmothered. It's it's a a modern fairy tale set in Boston, um, you know, fairy godmother from uh, the motherland um, to save her job and her people's livelihood, um, basically answers the last known letter from uh, a, a girl who wrote to a fairy godmother and it ends up being old. So now the actual fairy godmother is, um, is or the person that the fairy godmother is going for, Isla Fisher, um, is a mother and doesn't know what she wants anymore. And I thought the film was uh, very funny and charming, but I'm curious to know what everybody else thought. And I feel like it's only fair to start with Becca since she obviously cares more than any of us. Yes, uh, I know. My, my dress has like a fluffy uh, skirt and everything. I'm all, <laughs> I'm all dressed up to be godmother. Um, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was. I thought it was very cute. Um, it it reminded me a lot of Enchanted with the like difference between or having someone who's a little naive to how things work in our world. <laughs> but uh, I I thought it was really really good. Yeah, I definitely agreed about the Enchanted comparisons. Um, definitely feels related in some way. Doobie looks thrilled to be here. Um, and you're not normally on movie clubs. So let's hear from Doobie. I, I made a special request to be here. I don't normally do movie club, but when I saw Godmother was the movie, I wanted to be on because that's how much I enjoyed this film. It was it was a wonderful Christmas movie, even though it wasn't particularly a Christmas movie. But I, considering when it was released and when it was set, I'm going to call it a Christmas movie. So we had Noel in year one or year zero. I'm not sure how that works. And then we had this this year. Um, I, I'm looking forward to next year now. They've they've got these right. They're not cynical in the tiniest bit. They're pure heartwarming, pure feel good, and the I can handle one of those a year, and I'm comfortable getting that from Disney Plus at Christmas time. So I love Godmothered, and I will now go back to watching um, people get killed on Lifetime Channel until next December. Hmm. Kyle, you're probably the most critical of all of us. What did you think? <laughs> I I thought it was fun. Uh, I'd say. I think I like Noel a little bit more. I think that this probably had less offensive CGI, uh, <laughs> except for one scene. Uh, but no, I thought it was I thought it was a lot of fun and better than I would have thought. Like I wasn't I, I we put it on because she was going to be on the movie club, and then I watched. I was like, oh, I actually started to get into it. So that's that's why I decided to. to that's very coming. true. What was the offensive CGI bit for you? Uh, the the firework thing, like that just looks oh, so stupid. I gotcha. But yeah, Noel had a lot worse CGI overall. Yeah, but I I will say I I would also rank Noel as the better of the two Disney Plus original holiday films. Um, but I I, I enjoyed Godmothered a lot. I didn't uh, dislike it by any means. Uh, Benji, 
what were your thoughts? I enjoyed it. It's a good Christmas movie. I think I'm with Kyle where I'd like Noel better. Uh, but it's one of it's, it's it stays with you. Like in the end it's sort of an innocuous Christmas movie or it's calling it Christmas. It's like that's like calling Die Hard a Christmas movie. It takes place at Christmas, but it's not a don't Christmas movie. That, don't even start. Die Hard is such a Christmas movie. Um, <laughs> and it's Disney now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what's your favorite Disney Christmas? We'll get into that. Um <laughs> I think it it could just I, I wonder if COVID impacted the sort of composition of the film because it felt like it was just a little undercooked. So actually I got the opportunity to talk one-on-one with the director. Um, our interview is up on Laughing Place right now for anybody who wants to go and read it. Um, and she was awesome. She directed uh, Bridget Jones's Diary. I'm a huge fan of that film. Uh, but I actually asked that question because they filmed in Boston from January to March. And I asked if they were, um, if they had any added pressure with the coronavirus looming and the possibility of there being a shutdown. And she said they were four days away from finishing the shoot. Um, after the fact, and this I learned from the Four Scores podcast with the composer Rachel Portman, um, after the film was kind of locked and test audiences got a hold of it, they loved Gary the Raccoon so much that they asked for more Gary the Raccoon. So they did go back and do, um, I don't know if they required any reshoots, but they added more Gary uh, back into the film because people loved him so much. Um but the only compromise that it sounded like they had to make, at least from the director's point of view, was the epilogue was going to be live action. And they had kind of talked about doing it animated early on and then decided against it. But that was going to be the last thing they shot. And they didn't end up getting to shoot it. So that's why you have that little animated bit at the end, but not an animated intro to match it. I actually wondered that specifically. So yeah, I'm glad you got the yeah. answer. Woo-hoo. I think to me, it feels like a movie that they they put up on reels and it was good, but then it could like the reshoots just didn't seem to. Maybe the editing, um, as you mentioned before, on another show, it comes across like the trailers are edited better than the movie. And yeah, that, the scene in particular, like the part of the trailer that I laughed hardest at, is when Isla Fisher's character is in the stall and she gives her that big poofy ball gown at the holiday party and she comes out and it's so funny the way they edit it in the trailer and in the film there's just so much time in between it that kind of like when when the punchline hits you're kind of like oh okay yeah I agree I agree but I mean it, it is very funny for me I didn't know going into it how many other actors that I'm a fan of were going to pop up. And so it was kind of a, a fun um, little like who's coming next for me. Were there any actors, particularly in the supporting cast, that you weren't expecting to see that you were excited by? And whoever wants to take that, take it. So with the caveat that I saw this and Jingle Jangle and the Santa Claus all around the same time. So if I mix them up, please, you know, correct me. Because I think the Money Rose is not in Godmothered. <laughs> I'm not that bright. Um, Disney Legend, any kind of <laughs> I, I said that as soon as I saw her in Jingle Jangle, not this movie. Um, can we take the solo off me? I really like to see other people's reactions. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't know. I didn't know this person, but I really, really liked her. And then I looked her, look her up after the fact. Oh, come on, the <laughs> older daughter in the movie to me, the the um, nervous daughter. I don't know why, but she really, she really struck for me. I said she did a great job. I love that character, and she she was my favorite character in the show, other than the pig. I have a question for Doobie. So you saw the Santa Claus with Tim Allen, like yeah, the original. I'm okay. realizing I don't think I've seen it before. Oh wow. I don't um, see if there was anyone that really jumped out at me, like, oh, I'm excited to see this person, but I did notice that the guy who plays her boss was Pache on the Muppets, and he's playing mm-hmm. almost the same role. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's an annoying guy. I, that character is not fun. <laughs> what, what? Which of the three movies did you enjoy the most? That's a tough. I right. honestly would say, um, okay, I personally enjoyed Godmother the most, but I think Jingle Jangle was the best. Hmm. 
I'm like five minutes from the end. Benji had to use the TV, so. One TV household. So I, I, um, in my teen years, loved Mad TV. I don't know if any of you ever watched Mad TV. <laughs> but Stephanie Weir is the the female news co-host, and she played one of my favorite Mad TV characters, Dot. Um, like if you just go Google dot mad TV, um, and watch a couple of her sketches, um, be over 13, but, uh, those are hilarious. <laughs> and, um, she does such a good job. My biggest laughs in the film were her over sensationalizing the news. Cause that's what the boss is, is driving home. Um, and, uh, I talked to the director about her performance specifically, cause I was curious to know how much of hers was improv. And I want to go back and rewatch the film because I guess in the part, when the news is on in the background and the mom gets home from work, um, she's in the background and she's just improving, improvising all of the news. Like she just made it up on the spot. And so I really want to go back and like listen in on like the surround sound and see if I can hear everything she says or if they subtitle it. Um, I'm also a big fan of It's Always in Sunny in Philadelphia. It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, the FX show. And um, both uh, Isla Fisher's sister is the waitress on the show. And then the camera woman for their news circuit is um, Artemis D's friend. Uh, if anyone's a fan of the FX show. I have a question. You said you listened to the Four Scores podcast. And I, I believe I briefly overheard that the person who did the score has a legacy with Disney Christmas movies. movies? Well, so funny story. So Rachel Portman, she's the first woman to win an Oscar for composing an original score. She won it for Emma. Um, at the end of the 90s, the Gwyneth Paltrow version. And then she also was the first woman composer to win an Emmy uh, for the same thing, for, for an original composition. But before she was so um, had such a huge trophy case, she composed the score for Beauty and the Beast, The Enchanted Christmas. Uh, that's her so, score. Yes, this is her second uh, Christmas movie and her second Disney movie doing the score. You mentioned celebrities. Um, another one that caught me was the narrator was the scientist from the dinosaur attraction over at Animal Kingdom. Um, she also played Mrs. Huxtable. I see, I see. You are here. You're, <laughs> you're mixing maybe. Alicia, Alicia Rashad is in Jingle Jingle. Dune Squibb is the narrator of Godmother. <laughs> I warned you this might happen. Thank you for the correction. <laughs> no problem. Well, Felicia Rashad is in Seoul. So we'll come back in a couple yeah. of weeks. Felicia Rashad <laughs> does have a, a Disney Plus uh, exclusive movie coming this month. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can I talk about a scene that bothered me? Sure. <laughs> so there's a part where she sees him in the park or whatever. And she says, why are you dressed like Prince Charming? And he's wearing a tri-corner hat and he's clearly like a revolutionary and he's going to the tea party. I'm like, you work in news, you live in Boston and you don't recognize what this is. She was hitting on him. Come on, Kyle. I know it's been a while since you've had to be in the dating game, but that, that was a smooth line he was using. She was using. I don't know. Oh, did you notice that his last one name question. is Prince? One question. What? What? What are we on me for? Um, because <laughs> so how was Kyle's pickup game? <laughs> <laughs> well, we we actually our first date was an unofficial date, and it was at Magic Kingdom. And we spent I had gotten off of my early shift at work, so I was done at ten. And I picked him up from a friend's from our friend's house, and we spent the rest of the day together. And we basically planned our wedding on that first that first like unofficial date. Oh. Wow. And yeah, because we While were we were we on were, the way to Magic Kingdom. We weren't even there. We were on the the boat. And I, I asked like I him if, if he was going to get married at Disney because he was such a big Disney fan. And he's like, "No, I've always thought I would elope." And I'm like, "Me too." And he's like, "Let's do that." And then we're like, "Okay." We just kept talking and then we never stopped talking. So, I don't so know if I was just you know, totally ready for everything and like didn't Put up much of a fight, I don't, but <laughs> so you said it was. You said it was an unofficial date. So is that like a like a regular Birnbaum date? Except it has it just gives Nine Dragons a terrible review. Sure. Okay. Can I can I say something? I I, I don't do these movie clubs often, but do we talk about the movie sometimes? I wanted to say something about the movie. Not yeah, really. sometimes. I don't yeah. know. Have you seen Parks Talk? <laughs> 
So I went into this. I, I have a long history of watching Hallmark movies this time of year. Mm -hmm. So I went into this expecting to see a guy and a girl get together, which mm -hmm. I know is so passe. So when we met the the oh, other wow. new actor, I thought I knew where this was going. And um, to, much to its credit, that's not where this was going because that was not what the story was about. You know, she had a former husband and she had the two children. So it was nice to see, you know, after day after day after day of Hallmark, it was nice to have something different. Um, come our way for Christmas time. Yeah, that I mean, it's it's definitely um, following in the wake of like what was set up, I think, with Frozen. I feel like Frozen was the first mm -hmm. of this ilk of like, it. it's not about finding a man <laughs> to find your happiness. And they do kind of set up that Mackenzie and Hugh, you know, might go off and, and have a little bit of a romance, but you know, in the end, it was it's it's very sweet because it's a mother try, kind of learning how to be a mom again and be there for her family after the loss of their husband. Their it father. was a much funnier story. It was a much funnier story when the husband left to be with his pirate teacher <laughs> when we found out he actually died. That was yeah, that, that hurt a little bit. So, since it takes place in Boston, did they happen to coincide with the um, filming of Kenobi? <laughs> Is that filming in Boston? So apparently the local Boston media got confused. It's filming in the Boston, Boston, UK, but they reported as that it was filming in Boston. Oh. I saw that story too. I thought it was filming in Boston. That was cool. I feel like I want to ask Becca a question as the only female here okay. with such a, a female-centric movie, but I'm a guy, so I can't really think of anything. So. <laughs> Interesting. You like the broken scene. No? What? It, I'm sorry. The pumpkin, what? The pumpkin scene with the exploding pumpkins. That was kind of funny. Yeah, that was that was kind of funny. How I, about, what was your favorite scene, Becca? Or your favorite part of the movie? Hmm, that's a really good question. I did like when, when she was, uh, when, my goodness, I can't even think. <laughs> when they got to the to the basement, they let her into the basement and uh, and then Mackenzie goes into the house to take care of her girls and then came back and already <laughs> Eleanor had set up her entire, her bed with all those pillows and everything. And she was like, what did you do? I, I thought that was funny. I, <laughs> I, I appreciated that. I was, so I'm a huge fan of peanut butter and I already know what Benji's answers to this is gonna be, but she snubs the peanut butter sandwich and I don't understand why. Like she sniffs it and she goes, oh no, thank you. Um, so is everybody else other than Benji pro peanut butter or anti peanut butter? Who's, who is anti, even people that are allergic to peanut butter are pro peanut butter. They're just, no, nope. he hates the taste. Peanut butter's the best. Peanut butter. I agree. Great source Give of protein. Give me a spoon and a jar and I'm so, I'm so good. <laughs> Or a pack of Oreos in a jar. Yeah, like, dip, the Oreos. dip the Oreos. Maybe he's been having the wrong type of... Maybe he only ate Peter Pan, and that's why. Maybe it's not good. <laughs> that's good I peanut butter. Like cello peanut butter. Skippy. Made from a real nut. Like <laughs> Cheesy. Like Alex, Alex, as a peanut butter aficionado, do you prefer the smooth or the crunchy? I am a chunky monkey. I'm a chunky wow. peanut butter kind of person. Wow. I like a little crunch. On the in your munch. All right. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I prefer the smooth. <laughs> smooth. So I, I, one thing, I mean, and I know we keep going back to this, but isn't it nice that Disney Plus is a way of making a movie like this that would, it's not quite Disney Channel, wouldn't fit there. No, too good for that. It would be really theatrically. No one would have noticed. These these singles and doubles, as, they, as Dick Cook used to say. Uh, I have another people people want to for it. Peter Butter? So, what? Can I, can I make another point? Yeah. Um, no offense intended. Truly. No, this isn't offensive. Okay. Um, one of the things I like about this movie is all of the people in it, more or less, certainly all the lead characters, the family, the sister, the, the mom, the fairy godmother, are pretty ordinary looking people. These aren't the typical Hollywood beautiful people. They're, they're just... Normal. I, would, I, I, I don't know. I love Fisher fine. is not your typical. Who? Lady. Which one? I love Fisher. I thought that too, but then I looked her up, and I'm like, no. I mean, she's she's not my she's level. I mean, she's not you know Charlize Theron or something. She's 
I don't know why I picked her. I've never said her. I don't even know how to pronounce her name. But um, <laughs> she, maybe she. I mean, fair enough if you want to say that. She is not not, and she's not extremely young. I mean, I felt like they tried to cast more or less realistic. And not what are you talking about Jane Curtin like that for? And June Squibb. <laughs> <laughs> I no, do love I mean, Go ahead. You know what I, I was going to say. <laughs> I want to hear the female opinion on this. <laughs> about the about the the beauty of the people? Um, yeah, whatever you were going to say. No, I was just going to say that I I agree with Doobie. I mean, they're it's they're very believable. It's not like seeing somebody who you're like you're way too gorgeous to be to be living this life or whatever. Um, Adam Sandler with Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> and then I would, I would Jim Belushi with, with anyone. The, the male lead was stereotypically more Hollywood attractive than the female lead, which is not usually the case in something like this. Mm -hmm. Isla Fisher is Sasha Baron Cohen's wife and baby mama, too. Oh, that is a shame. <laughs> I thought she was going to confess to us about her shopaholicness when she came out with all those bags. Mm. Her her other Disney film, yeah. under the Touchdown label. Can oh. can I get um, an opinion from the guys on the on the animals in the movie? Because I mm. know you guys are dog people, but pets in general, you guys want to yeah. speak about that? I I love I love that the dog turns into a pig. Um, you know another opportunity to, to drop the fact that I'm from Wisconsin. Uh, but I love me some barnyard animals. And, um, I thought that was really fun. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I actually was wondering, uh, since so many of these movies have been released now on Disney Plus that wouldn't necessarily have had a life in the theater, or maybe they would have, what merchandise would Disney have sold if this had been released in the theaters? Like, Gary. obviously, yeah, Gary, but obviously the watermelon carriage, right? Like, what? There, there definitely would have been, like, in the parks, if this was a, a theater thing, a, like, dessert in a watermelon carriage. Um, I think, I think Eleanor's wand. Mm-hmm would have been a merchandised item, especially because it has a jewel on the end and they would have had like a light up variant of that that plays sounds. Um, I am certain that David's bridal would have had a bridesmaid's dress that was the equivalent of the godmother's dress. Funny you say David's bridal specifically because that's <laughs> where the actress went with the costume designer to figure out the shape of the dress. And she really? talked about that in the press junket that the costume designer and her and the director were at David's bridal and they're, you know, they're not telling anybody else what they're doing. So all these other women are trying on dresses to actually be married in. <laughs> and she's coming out in like the cupcakiest dresses that are unflattering. And they're all looking at her like, oh, that looks nice. And you, can tell <laughs> her, you know, just being nice to her. But, um, you know, they didn't say, oh, this isn't, I'm not getting married. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they went to David's bridal and then base the dress on that. I like the dress personally. I mean, it, it's a little, it doesn't, I, I'm not, I'm a dress wearer like you probably are, Becca. It doesn't look very practical, but it's quite attractive. Yeah, it was a pretty, it was a pretty dress. And they layered it with flannel. Mm. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> I'm sending something. I'm putting something in the chat. I want to be uh, the the private chat. I want to be to click on regarding David's bridal. Um, <laughs> it all comes back around. <laughs> hey, uh, do you know who the CEO of David's bridal is right now? I do. So it's the private chat. <laughs> the one and only Paul Pressler, former head of Disney Parks and Resorts. Yeah, and to be honest, uh, he got replaced in a company turnaround effort. He just hasn't updated his LinkedIn. Uh, you know the formal CEO of David's Bridal? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty awesome. So, I wonder why they had such maintenance issues. <laughs> just plush, plush everywhere. Plush everywhere. Press Bridal. Um, can, I, can I go a little off topic? Yeah. <laughs> So, 
so this is a Disney Plus original film. And recently, like a real one. Yeah, like like designed for Disney Plus. <laughs> recently, uh, AT and T announced that all Warner Brother films in 2021 are going to go straight to HBO Max, which apparently has not been well received by many people in the film industry. Well, Chris uh, Nolan's a fan. What's that? Chris yeah, Chris Nolan. Nolan. I mean, except Chris Nolan. Um, and in the article, they basically said, like, at least they're you know, at least Disney is doing it on a film by film basis, which. You know who knows what will happen on Thursday, but <laughs> do you? Wor- I guess I'm a little concerned that if big movies come to Disney Plus, could it be possible that these kinds of movies could get crowded out? I don't think so. And the only reason I say that is Disney Plus so far seems like they want to have something new every week, and several things. I mean, they want to have a couple episodes of a series, and then they want a movie or a special, it seems like weekly. Um, That's kind of been the trend. And like, I remember in the summer, they were originally the uh, Secret Society of Second Born Royals was gonna come out in July and they pushed that to September. And it wasn't because the movie needed more time. It was just because they realized there was a hole that they needed to fill later on down the road. And they had Hamilton to, you know, fill all of Hamilton, all of July with people like do be watching it over and over and over. So um, I I don't think so. Personally, I would hope not. Yeah, I mean, I'm more inclined to say that that's a possibility. But then again, I think they've had success with this kind of tier of release, um, not just on here, but also on hulu like i know uh, i know i don't think they produced it but happiest season did really well for hulu um and that would i'd say maybe that's probably you know one step above this just because it has a few more recognizable stars not that i i thought fisher is actually a pretty big star but uh yeah i don't know it's hard it's hard to say and i'd worry about that but i think they'd separate that with the premiere access and i think it would kind of even each other out Mm. I think I, I would hope, certainly hope not. We need these smaller movies. I feel like these are the kind of movies too, especially when they're a little more geared, a little more geared towards children, that they just watch over and over and over. And I mean, I could see younger ones watching this over and over and over. It's that kind of, and you're all you always want those on your on your home releases now. Togo's maybe a different story. Maybe we won't see that anymore. But this one, I sure hope so. Yeah, Togo was a little. And, Maybe a little too serious for Disney Plus. Yeah, but these, I mean, you know, I feel like Disney Plus might be a good a good platform for family movies or movies geared towards children specifically. And like so an ABC family. The <laughs> kind of family. Maybe yeah, why, why don't they why isn't the 700 Club on Disney Plus? <laughs> <laughs> I think like Disney Plus should get into that whole free form or was it free form FX? I don't know. But like 25 days of dog movies or something like that. Hmm. Get it get going with stuff like that. If not, we can do it. <laughs> We're gonna produce okay. our own streaming service, LP Plus. I, I didn't quite mean it like that. Oh. Talk about such things. <laughs> what do you think, Becca? About what about movies coming to the, about this? Yeah. Our big movies, yes. <laughs> no, I think I think you guys are 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 right, and I think there's definitely an audience for these, you know, smaller singles and doubles, as we said, uh, smaller films. There, it's something that I might want that I I could see myself seeking out, even if I had all these other great options to choose from, which you already do. But even if you did have something like you know Black Widow on there, I'm still go. I'm still very intrigued by these smaller. Disney Plus originals, and I think that even if you did have a bunch of big releases on there, you'd still you still have people who want something a little bit more lighthearted and fun, and that you don't have to maybe uh, can't think of the word I'm looking for, but you might not have to preview or be so concerned about. You can you can put it on and just you know your your fam- whole family can enjoy it. Yeah, the only thing I just thought about is, you know, Disney restructured their whole, like, department that even makes content, you know, where they're focused more on just making content, and then another team decides where it actually goes. So, you know, I I think we're so far away from actually seeing what the future holds for the way Disney churns product out to begin with. Um, 
but I would I would hope that you know this kind of filmmaking. I was so happy that it returned with the um, introduction of Disney Plus. I would hate to see it go again so soon. Mm-hmm. It's I don't also think as far as away as you think. <laughs> it, it's nice that you can have like your big stars, like the star of Home Improvement or um, Buzz Lightyear, the voice of Buzz Lightyear, and put them in a smaller movie like this and still get them. Mm-hmm. Dick Cook era. Um, <laughs> you you said it's not as far as you think. Which way am I going, Ben? But um, <laughs> I seem to remember throughout like all of Rich Ross's time, we were still getting Dick Cook content, and then after Rich Ross left, we like only got like two things, and then it was all of a sudden. No, but, it, but the people making the content's not really changing, mm. and with the exception of like Disney Plus unscripted. That's a whole new group, so that might take some time to figure out where that lands, but. I don't think we're going to go into this investor day on Thursday and not find out what kind of stuff they're going to have on Disney plus moving forward. Mm. And, you know, it's, it's not, I mean, you know, obviously they have, you know, one of the advantages I have with this Disney plus is they know everything about us when we watch it. So, I mean, I think the kind of content will evolve through time, but I think they definitely have a plan. It's just, you know, corporate juggling that's happened. You know, what ABC looks like, in a year, that might be a little less clear, but Disney Plus, I think we're going to know. I have forgotten all about Red Ross. Oh, <laughs> I'll never Watch let prom. anyone forget the prom. It's not on Netflix, but on is it on Disney Plus? Watch a prom on Disney Plus. No, prom is on Disney Plus. There's a different prom on Netflix. That one's a musical. I'm so confused oh, by prom. Yes. And there's also, I think, Prom Night was a Netflix <laughs> series. Hmm. I, think, I think that's what it was called. Netflix just loves prom. And then there's um, mm-hmm. there's Carrie Goes to the Prom. That one was pretty good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that one was great. I, I'm wearing the shirt in honor of... of well, funny, funny story. The actor that played Gary was also in Carrie. Mm-hmm. Gary in this movie? And Godmothered? Really, there was, a, there was an actor that played him. Well, I mean, the, the in w- when they show where it came from. I'm so confused. I'm also What's very the iconic scene in Carrie, the blood. Oh, what you're being disgusting. That's really funny, though. Oh, <laughs> gross. That's really funny. I applaud yeah. that. One. <laughs> but no, for any kids watching on set, there was a stuffed animal for Gary. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say it was like D. Bradley Baker who does a voice in any and every uh, or an animal sound in every animated show ever and I thought that's where I thought that's where you were going (laughs) including Perry the Platypus going much grosser than that (laughs) well anything else we want to say about Godmother we've hit the 30 minute mark which is usually I I didn't like the action sequence at the end I like the ultimate ending but the penultimate ending with all the flying watermelons and stuff, not a fan. No, yeah. I thought can, that was. Can fun. we just all all rue the day where do we learn the term penultimate? <laughs> <laughs> no, we can't. I'm just glad he has. He doesn't appear to have learned the term for second to last, or you know, third to last. I would say the phrase that pays for me with Doobie is palatial estate. <laughs> that was also a really weird choice of song at the end. Maybe because I've watched ABC you know, when they played that song for two months straight. I was going to say, like, when they made the film, it would have been like a month before Rise Up became like the pandemic anthem. Rise Up, Rise Up. <laughs> so apparently there's a word called anti-penultimate that I will yeah. now start using every trivia contest. Thank you. <laughs> Tomorrow at 7.30. <laughs> yep. Disneyland holidays and Disney World holidays, seven thirty PM Pacific. I, uh, I I was listening to the Marvel podcast and they were talking about how okay this is the anti penultimate. I was like, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else we want to say about Godmother before we wrap it up? Wait. We got to promote our anti penultimate movie club of the year next week. Safety. Ooh. You can leave this world behind. Look at me. I'm a man without a hat. You can read you can read the behind the scenes of safety today on Laughing Place, and you can see like our everybody else. on Wednesday. 
And we actually have another article at school, it's a, an interview of the producer, and he talks all about how much he loves Disney+. Plus. Yes, Mark Ciardi, who I mispronounced Mark Ciardi. <laughs> Not to be confused with Mark Ciardi, the head of Regal. Or Cinemark. Okay, what's our next live thing? I believe it I believe stars it you. 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 No, you. Yeah. Hi. Tomorrow. Hi. Three o'clock. Yes. We'll be talking about merchandise and toys, and Alex will be joining us. Oh, or where? Which way? My yes, Al Alex <laughs> will be joining us. <laughs> so don't miss that. <laughs> we need to do a Brady Bunch style at one point. <laughs> I love I love Barely Necessities. That is my my favorite new show. Although Inside LP is a close second. Inside LP is a really good show. And when he says LP, Inside LP, I think you mean LP in depth. In depth. <laughs> Give it up. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> LP in depth is a great show. Not as good as Barely Necessities, but really, really good. And Doobie will be on the next one, I think, right? Possibly. We'll see. One of the Mosleys will be on the next one. One of the Mosleys will be. What is the next one? We're going to deep dive into the shareholder meeting. You mean the investor conference? That's what I mean. <laughs> okay. Do we need to are put we like, a decoder, like a thesaurus on here? <laughs> it's like Jim Rome. We should put a grid on the side. Like when we say this, we really. <laughs> <laughs> Is it always going to be business related? No, but that's the. I wasn't going to be business related this week. It was supposed to be Christmas themed, but then. Well, you know, I wasn't sure if that would Christmas, as Christmas relates to business. Well, it's Disney. Everything's business. Mm -hmm. Wow, look at you. Mr. What do you say? Okay, JPEG. <laughs> I, told Doobie, I told I told Doobie when you know how long when Bob Chapek um took over as CEO. Do you know how long it took to remove all to change out all the uh pictures and altars at my house? <laughs> in, in no time at all. Closet, it's like on Hey Arnold when Helga had her little like shrine and she had made a bubblegum Arnold made out of like all the bubblegum that he spit out on the bus. It's like that. Did you have a an Eisner shine bef shrine before Iger? Oh yeah. Did, how long did one it... of those like Mexican prayer candles with Eisner? <laughs> did it last Iger or did it last to like vote, vote, vote or how did it? No, it lasted until the official transition. I, I don't, you know, until the gray smoke came out. <laughs> or white smoke, whatever it is. But it's the office, not the person. Uh, it's it's yeah it's uh, it's the office not the person. Um, Is there a person who could take that office that would make you no longer root for like be at this level of fandom for the office? Kevin Mayer. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> don't be shy, Benji. <laughs> Kevin, if you're watching. Never mind. You know what? <laughs> this is way too long for him. He likes things in quick, little <laughs> twelve seconds. Yeah, he likes his, his things to be um, hot dog ratio and uh, just three thirty seconds or however long Quibi was. He likes Quibi his was videos fine. like he likes his ten years short. <laughs> am, I, am I the only one here that actually enjoyed Quibi? I never even I checked it out. TikTok, not Quibi. <laughs> I never accepted the free trial. Free trial lasted a long time. It lasted well, longer than so excited. I was so excited for it, and then I we didn't use it much at all. And also, it was what April when it all when it all launched. I think yeah. we watched two or three or two or three like individual episodes. But I was so excited for it from from the time it was announced, and then yeah, I didn't. I my, my part. My favorite thing is the analysis of it either launched at the wrong time or it was a bad idea, but we'll never know because <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's a streaming service that didn't succeed because everyone was stuck at home. You might have <laughs> planned this poorly. <laughs> but the one with Thor was good. Mm. I like that show. Does any of that content live on elsewhere? 
Oh, that's a good question. I don't think so. I think they're trying, but I think it's on 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 like HBO Max or something. But you have to turn your laptop sideways to watch it, so no one's bothering. <laughs> There's actually this revolutionary website that I heard that they might put it on called YouTube. <laughs> oh. oh. Um. Speaking of HBO Max, can I just read a quote about sure. HBO Max? Sure. Um, this, is, this comes from someone named Chris Nolan. No, uh, I think he's a director of some sort. Um, and it says, uh, where did I put it? You someone think he would have had a movie. movie? And now they're okay. turning to us to actually talk about the movie. Sad, well, as soon as, as soon as we're done not talking about the movie, you can go back and watch the parts where we were talking about the movie. <laughs> <laughs> but basically... Did you like it, though, uh, Purple Tink? Is she talking about Godmothered or... Um, I'm assuming she's so. talking about Godmothered and not Tenet. Hi, Purple Tink. How you doing? Purple they, um, Tink 007. I know. Peacock has all the 007 movies right now. Ooh. For free, right? Well, Peacock is free, so that yeah, was dumb. you have to watch an ad. <laughs> but Chuck isn't streaming anywhere. And I know that wasn't an NB. It was an NBC show, but it was, I think, Warner Brothers produced. Hmm, Fortunately, good. I have the DVDs. <laughs> That's why you always keep the DVDs. Famed Chris Nolan, who has such a strong relationship with Warner Brothers, some of our in industry's biggest filmmakers and most important movie stars went to bed the night before thinking they were working for the greatest movie studio and woke up to find out they were working for the worst streaming service. <laughs> you can only say that as of December 1st. So, you know, you know. Could have been working for Quibi. So <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> right. <laughs> can you imagine watching Tenet on your phone? <laughs> Does it like change from, from like your cell phone to your flip phone halfway through or something? Right. <laughs> I'm still looking forward to seeing that movie when it hits homes. I have not seen it. Or have I? Or I, I No, I haven't seen it, and I'm looking forward to it. Well, I can, all I can say is once you see it, you'll need to see it again. To, to be, be like, wait, what did I just see? That, that'll be convenient. Get that off of here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, God, any final thoughts on Godmother? I asked that like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> you, you might have new thoughts by now. <laughs> I have no new thoughts. Make a pot so of tea and put week? it on. Thank you. I'm very glad that she was able to sing her song and get through it. And her mom finally encouraged her instead of letting her live in fear. And in a way, that's kind of what being a parent is. I'm, just, I'm done. I'm just kidding. But I did like that part. Um. So in two weeks, we're going to have Big. So, Doobie, are you going to join us so we can have Silly String? <laughs> I like Big. I would love to see that again and do LP Movie Club. Do you have Big. one of those dancing pianos? If so, bring it. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of F.A.R. Schwartz. And do you have a Zoltar? Mm. Yes, if you have a Zoltar, bring that too. Well, no, because then I might end up being young or something or Big, no. Oh, yeah. I'll yeah. tell my old story. Hate being young at this age. Can I say that thirteen going on thirty is better than big? Oh, you can say it. Doesn't make it so. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I've never seen thirteen going on thirty, but I like Freaky oh, Friday. Good. <laughs> my favorite part is when somebody taps her and says who's your daddy and she just turns around and says her father's name like <laughs> completely not understanding who's in 13 going on 30 is that Kurt Cameron no no, no uh, 13 going on 30 is <laughs> uh, the one we with a dog. <laughs> hey, there's a show where Kurt Cameron yeah. Kurt Cameron and Dudley Moore Freaky Friday oh, in a movie in the 80s called that I can't remember. I just remember being super into Freaky Friday and being like, oh, it's Freaky Friday for boys. <laughs> like father, like son. But Actually, what's, this, what's this 13 going on 30 thing? That is big, but with Jennifer Garner. She's 13. Her birthday wish is to be an adult. And then she wakes up and, and she's 30 and she's a successful businesswoman in New York. And flirty and thriving. Mm -hmm. Was that the tagline? <laughs> Did she like play it. herself? Mark like Perry one him to Zac Efron. I was going to say seventeen again. If we're counting that, that's even better than thirteen going on thirty. Oh. 
Like, oh, every time it's on references. <laughs> yes. We need to do the new show we do, our tier show we need to do with uh age shifting movies. That that'll be fun. Freaky, freaky Friday, freaky. <laughs> freaky 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 Friday is a whole different thing. <laughs> Disney Plus should finally adapt a billion for Boris. Yes. What is, should I just hit the end broadcast button now? Was, <laughs> we should have hit the end broadcast button 25 minutes ago. Oh, I'm waiting for that would, that would have been really funny. Good night, everybody. We haven't got the ends out yet. Hey, Andy Circus is in 13th 